Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to be taking a close look at pixels. Now, for some of you, this will be a fundamental lesson, but I find that understanding how pixels work is very important. Now, the word pixel is actually a portmanteau, which means it's two words combined together to make a new word. A pixel is a picture element, and these are the building blocks of all digital images. Now, Photoshop is a raster graphic program, and it relies upon pixels to do its job. Let's see how they work. Now, I've opened up an image here, and if you are actually one of our premium subscribers, you can get this image for free. Simply visit our website at rastervector.com and learn how to download these. Let's go ahead here and take a look. I'm going to zoom in to a very large magnification. We'll choose View, Actual Pixels. Now, when we do this, we are viewing the pixels at 100%. Oftentimes, when you have a high-res digital photo, it will be bigger than you could fit on the screen at one time. When you choose View Actual Pixels, you are looking at a one-to-one -one ratio, one pixel to one point on the screen. This is important. When we're measuring graphics on a computer screen, we often talk about pixels per inch. And ideally, if you're going to be making some strong corrections or very subtle details, you want to choose View Actual Pixels so you're seeing them at a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, let's zoom in a little further so you can see these pixels at a larger size. The easiest way to zoom in Photoshop is to hold down the Command or the Control key and press Command Plus. The Command key has an Apple logo on it, and that's what you'll use on a Macintosh system. On a PC, hold down the Control key instead and press Plus. Notice as we zoom in here, we see different pixels. Now, we're using Photoshop CS4 here, and in Photoshop CS4, once you zoom in beyond 600%, you'll actually see the pixels outlined with a light white line. This white line will not print. It's just there to help you see the border of individual pixels so you can better understand how the image is built up and, if you need to, sample colors. Now, you could sample colors from an individual pixel by using the eyedropper tool, the shortcut for which is the letter I. You'll find it right here in the toolbar. And when we click on an individual pixel here, Notice how the color loads in the foreground swatch. As you work in Photoshop and you need to start to do painting tasks or image repair, you're going to need to know how to sample individual pixels. Zooming in like this makes it easier to see their unique color value. Now, when you're zoomed in this far, you're going to need to move around the image. One way to do that is to just hold down the space bar, which will temporarily switch to the hand tool. In Photoshop CS4, you can click and flick, and the image will actually throw into place. Earlier versions of Photoshop, you'll just have to keep clicking and dragging. But it's kind of fun in Photoshop CS4. Click, throw, and you get the idea. Let's zoom back out a little bit. To do that, it's Command minus, or on a PC, Control minus. And you see how those individual pixels are used to create shapes. For example, right here, we have several yellow pixels forming the shape of a flower in the fabric. Let's move a little further down, and you see that the pixels are shaping a leaf. This is much like how mosaics work, where you use small squares or tiles, and when you stand further back, you can see the bigger picture. Remember, pixels are the digital building blocks of all digital images. You need these to form the image resolution. More pixels generally means a clearer picture. Now, how many pixels do you need? Well, it's going to depend upon the usage that you intend for that image. So, for example, if you needed a 4-inch print in a newspaper, that works at about 150 pixels per inch. 4 inches times 150 means you need an image that was 600 pixels wide. Now, on the other hand, web browsers don't use pixels per inch, and most computer screens are about 1,024 pixels across. These numbers will vary, and we'll explore these throughout the podcast lessons. Let's see how you check the statistics for your image. If you've got an image and you want to see how many pixels it's made up of, simply choose Image, Canvas Size. You'll see that currently this canvas is 29 by 0.22 inches, and if we flip this to pixels, it's got 2100 pixels across. 
Now we can go ahead and resize this by choosing image, image size. And right now you see the measurements. If we were to display this at 72 pixels per inch, which is really thought of as screen resolution, like if you were doing something like PowerPoint, this image would display as about 30 inches across. 72 pixels per inch is way too low for print resolution. Let's say you were gonna do professional printing, like send this to get printed out on actual photographic paper through maybe a lab. For something like that, you would likely use 300 pixels per inch. So let's uncheck the resample image box and type in 300 pixels per inch. Notice now that we have a print that's about four by seven. We'll go ahead and click OK. Nothing changes on the screen, but if we choose print, you'll see how this image would actually print. File, print, and notice here that it fits easily on the normal printed page. That's about eight inches across. Wrapping your head around how pixels work is going to be an ongoing process, but throughout our podcast, we'll do our best to make sure it's perfectly clear to you. Now, I'd like to tell you about a couple of things that I think will help you get more out of Photoshop. We have a blog with lots of great information. You'll find it at rastervector.com. We've got tons of back episodes that explore all sorts of features with Adobe Photoshop. In the current round of episodes we're going to be producing, we're going to be showing Photoshop CS4. Our older podcasts cover CS3 and CS2, so you can check those out. The current episodes, though, will often work with older versions of Photoshop, so feel free to stick around and check all of those out. We also have a brand new book from Peach Pit Press, conveniently called Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4. Now, if you use the following discount code, UAP2, you can get 35% off the cover price over at Peach Pit. Plus, as a bonus to the podcast viewers, if you have the book and you watch the podcast, you can actually download the images that we use in the show. This way, not only can you watch, but you can get hands-on too. My name's Rich Harrington. I invite you to join us next week, where we'll be taking a look at a lot of cool things. Next week's topic is how to actually convert between different image modes. Thanks again for joining us.